What's going on, guys? So here at the Nine Hole Podcast, I obviously talk about all things baseball development. I talk about leadership, and I talk about the traits that are driving those qualities in our young athletes. Today, I have the opportunity to showcase some people that are doing great work um, for the leukemia and lymphoma survivors, um, patients. Uh, they are working to find a cure. They are helping our youth and our student athletes grow and learn leadership qualities and traits, all while changing the world and doing good. So it is my pleasure today to welcome Allison Courtney, Caden Coons Perdikas, yes, yes, and Denny Ziegler, uh, the athletic director at Strongsville. Thank you guys for being here. How are you guys doing today? Great. Yeah, Tuesday awesome. after a long weekend, you know, just jumping into it. I love it. I love it. How you do? How you doing, Caden? It's a pleasure to have you join us. Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Beautiful, Denny. How you doing, man? I am doing well. You know, start of fall sports. It's keeping me busy, but uh, you know, uh, kind of a nice long weekend kind of helped me get through that. You know, start of fall sports. So I appreciate you having us. I love that. Of course. So obviously. Um, you know, I, I've been learning a lot since I've been working, partnered up with the LLS, learning about leukemia, learning about lymphoma. Um, I've also been learning how to network, uh, how to how to speak better than when I came in, um, you know, how to command a room a little bit. Obviously, we have some leadership committee meetings where you need to use your, your voice. Um, you need to communicate outside of a team setting. So I'm learning all of these things as I'm developing alongside, um, you know, the, the Cleveland chapter of the student visionaries of the year. So obviously Denny, um, is, is on the leadership committee there, man. He is, he teams up, I mean, a great program. So this past year, 2024, 37 candidate teams and 553 team members from Northeast Ohio, local high schools raised over $1,050,000. It was absolutely incredible. Um, Denny, I'd, I'd love to just kick it off a little bit, um, before we dive into specifically, you know, what leukemia and lymphoma is and, and, you know, get some insight there, but how did you get set up, uh, you know, with the Cleveland chapter of the LLS? And then I'll ask, I'll ask you girls next. Sure. So, you know, for me, it started, um, right, uh, well, it was actually right before COVID happened. Um, I play or my sons play, um, uh, travel baseball with a principal that's at one of the local schools here at Brexville Broadview Heights. Um, and, you know, in a summer conversation, it was, Hey, I think that you should start to join this and get involved with it. You know, it's a great program. I love, I, I would love to get Sean's old, you know, back, back in this. Um, and of course at, at that time I said, sure. Had no idea what it was, had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, but, sitting on that year kind of, you know, seeing how things worked, um, how things were managed, how things were run, um, having the students from Strongsville come in and actually ask for help on ways that they could get more involvement from our community, from our school. Um, that really prompted me to want to take a bigger role in this. Um, knowing and seeing what it did for our students, um, the amount of, you know, leadership development that they received, um, the amount of confidence that they were able to build. Um, those are all things that we try to teach them through sport. And now it's not only through sport, but they're also getting this from a leadership program. Love it. Um, so, you know, fast forward to two years from then, um, I served as a co-chair in 2022. Um, and then I served as the chair for last year's um, uh, student visionaries of, of you know, the year program and kind of one of the things that I wanted to do or my goal was how do I bring awareness to more than just our local communities and, and schools. Um, so one of the things that I really focused on last year for this entire, you know, um, program or this, you know, the campaign season was to try to get more schools involved and try to use a lot of my, you know, resources from a athletic perspective um, and really share out what the student leadership program was and, and then what it did for our students. Um, and I've seen students go from really, really shy students to now being ones that are outgoing, that are out 
spoken. I've seen students that have gone from meeting with local corporations to now being offered six, seven different types of internships from the time, you know, that they leave the program. So, so that growth that I've seen um, is, is truly the impact that I had wanted to make with this campaign. Um, and I think our students are starting to, you know, are, are starting to feel that impact as, as well. So all well, those so. reasons are kind of what drove me to get more involved is, you know, I am someone that as an AD, we always preach to our students, hey, you have to give back to the communities. They give us so much. You know, what are you going to give back to them? Um, and that's really been been kind of at the forefront of what I do and why I do it, why our student athletes continue to do it. Love that. So, Caden, you are a soccer player at Duke, prestigious Duke University. Um, how did you get involved with the LLS um, and the the Student Visionaries of the Year? And uh, how are you? Uh, how are you still involved? What what kind of uh, you know role does that play in your life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I first heard about LLS when I was a rising sophomore in high school. So exactly four years four years ago from this point, and uh, my next door neighbor actually heard of the campaign. Her name's Cal O'Neill, and she brought this to me. And we're we're friends, and she was kind of like, "Look, like we have this really cool opportunity to like raise some money for blood cancer, and like I really think you and I could lead a great team." Um, and at first, I was like, "Okay, like I'll look into it." And um, like you know, Ali got involved and kind of presented the campaign to us, um, and I think hearing about it. My mom actually had thyroid cancer when I was about 10 and she was like, you know, totally fine now, went through surgery. Um, But like my connection to cancer, like kind of pushed me to really want to do this campaign. Um, So me and Cal, you know, we put a team together. We had, I think over a little over 20 high schoolers all involved. Um, And this was also the first year of COVID. So we're, you know, doing school online. Everyone's like in their houses alone, like on Zoom calls. And I think this just provided like an outlet of us feeling like we could do something in such a bad situation of, you know, everyone's home, everyone's feeling isolated. Like there's not a lot you can do. And I think LLS is opportunity students of the year provided a great chance for us to really get involved in our communities and really just like do something as opposed to just, you know, like sitting in your room all day. Um, So we did the campaign through Washington, DC. And I think it was uh, winter of 2021. Um, And it was just truly, I think as Danny touched on just like a, life-changing experience, um, you know, because you are in front of these large corporations like on these Zoom calls and you're asking them directly for money. And it's something that my first Zoom call, I remember, like I was so nervous going into it just because you don't really know what to expect, like how to pitch it, like what do you say to these like, you know, big names. Um, But over time, you get more and more comfortable just talking to people, reaching out to people and you kind of, you know, develop that network of people. Um, And also, again, like leading a team, you learn how to communicate with people, you learn how to like get people motivated to do things. We had weekly Zoom calls like with our whole team and we'd start out with like these motivational videos. We actually made like a Rocky pump up video um, of all of our team members. So it was really cool to see the ways in which like me, Cal and Ella like developed as leaders and um, really rallied around our team and just like building a great campaign. Um, So I did the campaign. And then after that, I was like a co-chair for the junior leadership team um, as a, I guess as a junior and senior in high school. And then now as a sophomore in college, um, Duke actually just officially named LLS as a club here, which you can join. Um, so I'm working with the president right now, and we actually have a like a kicking cancer themed soccer game. Uh, we play SMU September 27th, so we're trying to bring in LLS and kind of just you know raise more awareness to people because one of the things I learned through this campaign is really everyone's touched by cancer in one way or another. So I think just like continuing to raise awareness and. I mean, I, you know, I have a lot going on with soccer in school, but I think this is something that's really important to me. And I think that we just need to raise more awareness about LLS and like really all forms of cancer and just keep on, have people keep donating and keep on spreading the nest message and just making that network like bigger and bigger. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So Ali, how did you get, you know, involved with LLS and, and what kind of role does that play in your life? Oh my gosh, feels so long ago now. I've been with LLS for um, 10 years this past June. So, but I first got involved um, from running my first and only so far marathon through our, um, it's now called our athletic initiatives, but it was called team and training um, where you can run and fundraise. Um, and they've got tons, I'm sure I've seen nodding your head, like many organizations have, you know, you can get slots into big marathons. Gotcha. Um, so that's how I got involved. I 
and I did it through LLS because I had a friend in high school um, who ended up passing away uh, from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, so we watched him battle it all through high school and we did all little fundraisers for him in high school. And then he um, ended up passing away right after he turned 21. So I've always felt connected to this mission, having known someone. Um, and then even now I have two uncles who had um, blood cancer. So just blood cancer, I feel like is one of those things that people don't like, people like, oh, I have cancer, right? Like when I was younger, my uncles had cancer. I was like, oh, he has cancer. But it wasn't like, oh, he has lymphoma. Mm. So now as I'm older and being involved with LLS, it's crazy how many people have been affected by blood cancer. Um, I know. So that's how I got involved with LLS from the beginning and LLS from the beginning. And I've been working on our student visionaries of the year campaign for um, nine out of those wow. 10 years. Um, wow. with the DC area. And then now I'm the Northeast Territory Director. So I oversee, um, we have, how many do we have this year? 18 um, markets just in the Northeast. We have 68 um, all over the country. So I had an awesome time last year being able to go to Cleveland and North Jersey and DC and um, just getting to know awesome people like Denny um, and all of our other amazing volunteers all over the Northeast. I love it. So, uh, you know, when I had got acclimated um, and I started learning a little bit about the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, obviously from Denny, um, spent the majority of my time with Denny um, and Daryl from Cleveland, just, just kind of getting acclimated to everything. I had to learn a lot about, you know, what leukemia and lymphoma was. Um, and it's just because, you know, I never had any experience with it. Obviously, everybody's experience is different. And I was kind of ignorant to that because I, I never was involved with it, never experienced it. Could you just give a brief, um, you know, rundown? I know you said that it has to do with blood cancer, but what specifically is it? Um, I, you know, what, what, what happens? Uh, can you just elaborate a little bit on that? Yes. So LLS, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, our mission is to cure blood cancer. So that's a short mission statement. Um, the longer one is to cure um, leukemia, lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, and myeloma, and to improve the quality of life for patients and their families. So our mission is to really not only fund treatments, but to look at the survivorship of people after treatment and how, um, how treatment affects their lives after that. So there's hundreds and hundreds of different types of blood cancers, and they affect all different types of people. Really, cancer doesn't discriminate, like any age. Um, it, it's really crazy. I've met volunteers who've had, you know, their babies diagnosed with blood cancer um, or then grandparents diagnosed. So and depending on what you get diagnosed with, the treatment um, protocol is so different. What is crazy is how much that it's evolved over the years um, through working with volunteers. It's really interesting and inspiring to meet someone who says, if my uncle you know, or, or child was diagnosed right now, they would be alive because of how far we've come in treatments. And that is a lot to do with people like Denny and Caden and you who've fundraised. And now we can use that money to fund treatments. Um, the other thing I will say that I think people, specifically this campaign we talk about, is how many children are affected by leukemia. Um, leukemia is the number one most diagnosed um, form of childhood cancer. So if you know someone who has a child who has cancer, or you know, I always tell the high school students, if you meet someone who's a cancer survivor, it's most likely leukemia, um, which is what's really awesome about the high school students doing this, because they are truly doing something that affects so many people their age. Yeah. Okay. That makes a ton of sense. So could you just, could you also elaborate a little bit on what the student visionaries of the year program is? How do you guys work with high school students? Um, you know, how are you helping them develop? And then, you know, how are you guys ultimately making a difference, um, you know, for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society? Mm -hmm. um, I am so obsessed with this campaign. Like it is such a win-win program for both LLS, our mission, and our patients, and the students and the families that get involved. So it is a seven-week philanthropic leadership development program um, where students all across the country compete to see who can raise the most funds. So I say seven weeks because that time frame is when they can actually collect the money and collect the donations. So it really is a tightened time frame. And all of our campaigns across the country um, they kick off anywhere between January and February and conclude in the spring. 
Um, so it is around that like winter time period that that Caden mentioned. And the planning starts now though. So we're actually really deep in recruitment season, um, aiming to have all of our campaigns recruited by the end of November. A lot of our campaigns are actually striving to have their campaigns recruited by um, October 1st, because the earlier you get students on, the more time they have to plan. Um, I know Caden mentioned, you know, she did it in the pandemic year, but she still had like soccer practice and her academics and the students that do this campaign. Um, I'm like staring at Denny because he's seen so many students do it through his school. Like they're usually the busiest students. They're, they're usually in like NHS and DECA and all the clubs. Like they're the ones that are doing everything. So the earlier they sign on, the more they can build their teams, build their contact list, start planning out their campaign, working with their schools, if their schools are going to partner with them. Um, And that's where the leadership development comes in. Like I think about, you know, Caden and many other students, how they work with their parents and then do these like pitches of asking for, I mean, Caden, what was the largest sponsorship you asked for? Probably like 50K. Caden's up there, sophomore year, asking for (laughs) $50,000. That's so that's so Caden, you are part of a team, obviously, that that you help assemble or, you know, you're, you're part of a team based off of your, where you're located with your high school. So you guys all have different jobs in your team. Like I know you mentioned you were on a Zoom and, you know, it's nerve wracking asking somebody for money, right? And yeah. you have to learn that and you have to overcome it. Do you guys all have different jobs? Like how does that work? And, and was your job primarily, you know, getting on these, these Zooms one-on-one with people and asking the, the tough questions? Yeah. So um, I was like a leader of my team along with Kala O'Neill and Ella Song. So it was kind of the three of us. Um, and I think we had 21 team members. So we kind of like allocated our group. So we each like led like seven team members. Um, so we just kind of had like small teams within our larger team, just cause like, we just felt that it's easier to, we learned that it's easier to manage people when you have these smaller groups and you can kind of hold people more accountable when you're with them one-on-one or in a group of seven. Um, and so basically all of us would uh, reach out to like any connections we knew of like corporate sponsorships locally or more nationally. And that's when like you would go on the call with, um, with whoever you're reaching out to, whoever you're emailing. And Ali sometimes too would come on your first few calls to kind of help you facilitate, you know, like, how do I ask this? Um, so basically you get on a zoom call and you'd have like a PowerPoint pulled up and kind of, you know, I had my like speaker notes I'd go through and, uh, depending on the organization, like, if it were, um, I was pitching to a lot of like automobile bus- businesses through my dad because he's in that industry. So like I would kind of change my pitch, like depending on what company it is and how it would kind of, you know, benefit them or like if it was locally, how it would benefit them. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty nerve wracking to ask for like $50,000, especially, you know, you're 14, 15 years old. Um, but one of the things I learned is like my dad told me before this campaign, if you don't ask, you don't get. And that was so true. Like if, I, I ended up learning that like if you do ask for something like odds are like maybe you're not gonna get the 50k but you're gonna get the 10k you know so like a lot of times if you do ask for something like you will get something and I think that again like it's so hard to get on those calls but you learn so much just about like how to interact with people and how to really be confident in yourself and like in this mission to cure blood cancer and again like you're asking for money for cancer so it's there really is no number that's you know too big to ask for. Yeah, it's yeah. it sounds like kid you I I mean you and you know your fellow students your fellow peers they're learning you know great traits and developing these traits that are going to help them later in life. So I think about where I'm at now. I'm 32 years old now. I transitioned out of an industry that I knew, you know, for a third of my life playing baseball, college professional baseball and then transitioning out having a family, getting into wealth management and then trying to start a business, trying to start a podcast and then obviously we're here I get to have, you know, the LLS here talk about making a difference. It's like these, these traits that you guys are developing and helping these young students, young men and women uh, develop is it's going to be extremely fundamental come the real world, right? Coming into the business world, you guys are learning stuff and having these conversations already at the high school level. You're preparing these young leaders uh, for what's next. I think that's awesome. Um, Denny, so obviously, um, learning how you impact and make a difference, man, I would love to ask you, how are you involved with Cleveland student visionaries of the year, man? What's the role? What's the day to day? Um, and what, what, what kind of impact are you guys making? Sure. So, you know, I think for me, um, 
you know, coming from a co-chair to a chair to now, you know, getting out of the chair role, um, I don't view it as my role is changing. Um, I think my focus might be different. Whereas last year as a chair, I was more focused on, you know, the, the student recruitment piece, trying to get more schools aware, um, where now my focus has kind of transitioned to, hey, we have a good base with our schools, with our student recruitment. Um, the one thing that we were able to do or weren't able to do. So over my time, I saw a campaign that went from 750 to 820,000 to over a million. We've done all that without any corporate sponsors. So my focus this year is how do I get more of our corporate sponsors involved in this program? And how do we, how do we get them to see exactly what the benefits are of this program? Um, so that's kind of where my focus has, has gone to this year is, you know, not now that we have a, a good foundation base with our student teams, um, how can I make a bigger impact with our corporate sponsors? Um, so that was a way that I've been in, involved now, you know, this year. Um, and I, I will say I had the great privilege this summer to go and speak to all of the student visionaries of the year chairs, um, you know, where I shared exactly what we were able to do you know, from the Cleveland market perspective um, and how it worked and kind of what our focus was. Um, and I feel like that really helped me to engage more of not only our Cleveland market, but, you know, how can I impact a lot of other chairs from different you know states regions that is going to benefit them and you know is there something that i did in in our cleveland region that they can take with them and they can you know kind of revamp it for their needs their wants to make it a a a a, a better program for them there um you know one of the things that i'll you know i'll go back to what you touched on is you know from a student perspective the one thing that I've learned, you know, from this program, which I reiterate to students, they have to get used to people saying no. Um, a lot of times we have high school students that they always get sometimes what they always want and they're not used to getting told no. Um, so having our students prepare them for that no and understanding, hey, it's maybe not yes from these guys. It's a no, but that yes is going to come in another situation that you're in, um, you know, and I'll always tell the story. The first meeting that I went to with a student group with a large, you know, um, software company here was he saw his letter that he was sending out to businesses. And the first thing that the CEO said was, this is garbage. And he ripped it up. And, you know, to see the look on that kid's face and say, uh, but the fact that he learned so much and it taught me more even about, hey, you know, there are things that maybe a lot of marketing people, a lot of CEOs are looking for. And if it's not in the first couple of words of, of that paragraph, they're not going to read it much further. Um, so having that knowledge and going out and knowing that and seeing that, that that's what I kept, what has kept me engage with our students, um, you know, and, and how, and how I continue to build, uh, you know, the Cleveland region here. Love it. So we, we highlighted earlier, um, you get Cleveland specifically raised over $1,053,000 this past year. Um, so Ali, what was the total number, um, for this past year? We were talking a little bit before, uh, we went live here on air, what was the total number and how are you guys allocating those funds that you guys are able to raise? So this year in 2024, um, the total Student Visionaries of the Year campaign raised $42 million <sighs> um, in those seven weeks. And that was comprised of 67 individual campaigns, Cleveland being one of them. Um, which had over a thousand individual candidate teams. So led by how Caden saying like the leaders and they build their teams or over a thousand of those. And each team has team members and there was over 12,000 team members. So those are kind of the numbers of who put in all that effort to raise 42 million. 
Um, how those are being allocated, anything that is raised through our campaign. So Student Visionary is one of a handful of national campaigns we have. We also have Visionaries of the Year, which is basically the same competition, but for adults, uh, it's 10 weeks instead of seven weeks. We also have um, the athletic initiatives I was mentioning before and um, our Light the Night Walk, which is our awareness walks that happen in the fall. So those are our campaigns and all money raised through that goes to like our big bucket of mission funding. Um, which is allocated into our three pillars. So we have research, which is one pillar, um, advocacy, and then patient support. Okay. Um, so those are kind of a high level overview of where the money goes. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's fantastic. So um, obviously you guys are fundraising, um, you know, trying to bring awareness. Is there anything specifically this year for 2025 that you guys have, you know, in store, any, any big plans coming up? How are you guys going to make it special? Is it, can you reveal any of that stuff yet? Oh my gosh. Some hot off the press. Um, I'll have to think about that for stu- Like I, let me think if there's anything exciting. I think what's exciting on the mission front is we are um, really prioritizing pediatric cancers. Okay. Um, we have an initiative called dare to dream, Um, which is our goal of investing um, over around 175 million specifically for pediatric cancer patients and survivors. And it's, it's crazy. And if you are, if you know anyone who has had a child be diagnosed with cancer, they will be the ones to tell you um, that is a group that historically has not had a lot of mission dollars um, across the board go to. And there's many reasons for that. Um, children are growing, they're changing, right? It's hard to do um, to do research on them. So we are really making an effort to provide targeted pediatric research for pediatric cancer patients um, awesome. with, with the goal of treatments that will have um, less side effects, because that's a really big issue of pediatric cancer patients, they often have lifelong side effects. Okay. Okay. Um, So so that's exciting on the mission front. Absolutely. Keeping that front of mind, um, in addition to the many other things we fund. Um, We're excited to, um, this is going to be a big year because we are kind of making our way out of, I don't want to keep saying out of the pandemic, but (laughs) pre-pandemic, this was a very much like in the communities, in person, all of our meetings were in person, like the students did a lot of um, school events and, you know, the restaurant nights and stuff like that. And over the past, you know, since we were all on Zoom and behind computers, this year feels like the first year they're like, wow, we're back. We're back. People are going to do sponsorship meetings in person, like we're doing planning meetings in person, um, which is very exciting for for me, especially as someone who likes to be <laughs> in front of people. But I think it just gives the students such a different experience. Um, and I know actually Kaden talked about this when we were debriefing her campaign, like how different it would have been if she could have got together with her team and done their team meetings in person and done like events. So I think that's the biggest thing looking at at, um, at 2025 is more in-person stuff. That's awesome. So Kaden, I just wanted to highlight one last thing for you. I, obviously, we touched on it where it's like, these, these student athletes are getting involved and they are learning these skills. Do you think, you know, this maybe prepared you for college life? Obviously, like you are leaving the comfort of your home, you're going and and pursuing a career and and education. You're playing a top tier sport at a top tier university in a top tier conference. Um, Did anything with the LLS and the, and the student visionaries of the year, did that prepare you for any of this stuff? I definitely, um, I think kind of touching back, the biggest takeaway I had from this, this campaign was just being confident in myself. And I think, you know, as when you're in high school and, you know, classes are on zoom and like, you're kind of, again, isolated at home, it's hard to like really believe in yourself. And that sounds cliche, but I think just like that confidence you get from like being able to pitch these big asks and actually as Danny touched on, you don't always hear yes, but when you do hear yes, like it's so gratifying knowing that like your hard work to get something like you kind of made that happen. Um, so I would say, yeah, just the confidence of like, you know, then coming here to Duke and I, I also time management. Um, as Ali said, like it's, you really do a busy schedule. I know I did it during COVID. So I had, you know, a little bit less soccer going on, but um, it definitely like makes you think about what you want to commit your time to. And again, this was something that I really wanted to commit to. Um, and lastly, I would just say, I think 
you know, working as a team. Um, this reminded me so much of just my soccer teammates from my travel team back home and now being at Duke. Like we, the way that we communicate with one another on and off the field and the way that we, you know, push one another, motivate one another to always like do your best, be your best, do your best. Um, we say that we strive for excellence at Duke and that's kind of, I feel like what this campaign was, you know, you're trying to see like how much money you can raise and it it is a competition with other teams too, which adds a little bit of, um, you know, that motivates you a little bit, but I think just really learning how to push one another. And again, like we're all doing this like for blood cancer and for like my campaign, we really focused on like pediatric treatments. Like that was a big reason like why we were doing it. Um, so yeah, there's just so much motivation behind it and you really do learn so much. Yeah. Love the, love the motivation behind it. Like I said, coach Pollard, the head coach of the Duke baseball team had come on here and he was talking about the theme for his team being servant leadership. Like what, mm -hmm. what can we yeah. do to help others uh, and, and put others first along our journey? So that's awesome to hear uh, that those motivations kind of line up. Denny, um, being the athletic director at Strongsville, obviously you play an integral part in these student athletes, maybe moving on and pursuing careers, um, you know, maybe in sports, but moving on to the next level and playing their sport at the, at the collegiate level, man. Um, are your students able to maybe put this, uh, on their application, uh, write it into their resume? And are these, in, in your opinion, man, are they, are they learning the skills that are necessary kind of to take them to the next level, just like Caden was talking about? Yeah. You know, um, in my time here and my time being in, involved with the student visionaries of the year program for Cleveland, um, every, uh, student candidate that we've had has been a student athlete. Um, and so I've seen, you know, a guy that was right in the heart of a basketball season, you know, two years ago, um, and how he managed his, his skills, his time management, his team meetings. Cause one of the things that, that they, they obviously learn is they're not just managing students. They're also managing adults. They have a lot of adults that serve on their teams as, as well. So it takes a really strong-willed person with a lot of confidence to tell adults exactly what they want and what they need. Um, so, I, so I've seen from our students here at Stronzel, um, it is definitely a resume builder. Um, I've had to write a lot of letters of recommendation for them. Um, I will say one of the motivating factors that I do think that students get get involved a little bit with this is that they can earn college scholarships through this program. Um, so that is something that of uh, that a lot of students want. Hey, I want to do this because I want to make a name for myself on a college application and say that I was involved here. But they also can earn a college scholarship for that. Mm. Um, so. A lot of what our students have 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 gone through is not only you know you know that piece with the time management um you know the, uh the skills learning to manage other people um but i truly do think that their key in this whole thing is i want to make a difference um in not only you know the local community but you know a, a world as a whole um you know so i I would say that from my time with our students, um, I think a lot of them, yes, they have those other motivational factors such as the college scholarship, but I, I really truly feel like they do it just because they want to make a difference in, you know, in, in their communities that they work in. Man, I love that. That that fires me up. And obviously, uh, they are making that impact. They are making that difference, obviously, with the, the incredible year, um, you know, that, that you're your schools were able to come up with it in the, in the Northeast Ohio area, man, it's incredible. It was awesome to be a part of that. Um, so Ali, where, where can, um, you know, my listeners, my viewers, my audience, where can they find you and learn more, um, you know, about LLS, more about the student visionaries of the year? I know I'm ambushing you with those questions, uh, but do you have, do you I have, know the answer. Oh, I'd, lo I'd love to get those <laughs> answers from you. Um, so our overall general information for LLS is, LLS.org. Um, short and sweet, that's our main website where you can get information on where the money goes and all the different ways to participate. Um, we do have a, not separate because it's all connected, but if you just wanted to get directly to Student Visionaries, um, that's LLSStudentVisionaries.org. Um, and there's 
on the website. You can like learn more. You can just submit your name if you're just interested in learning more. If you want to nominate um, someone in your town or in your network to run as a candidate, um, there's a way to do that as well. And you can also um, apply to run yourself. Sweet. That's fantastic. Uh, that's Those are all the questions I had for you guys. I appreciate you letting me run you through the gauntlet. Is there anything else that you guys want to add, please? Whatever. Nothing. I love it. No, I, I so mean, great. Yeah. And I think for me, just personally, and you know, I know that Ellie can probably you know, second this, is there, there's more than just the student visionaries of the year program to get in, involved with. If there's someone out there listening that wants to get involved as a leadership committee member, you know, or if they want to volunteer doing things, every region I'm sure has a ton of volunteer, you know, uh, resources, opportunities for them to get involved with. So, you know, from my perspective, I, I would never say no to a single person who wants to get in, involved you know, in any way, shape or form with the program or, you know, with the organization, um, you know, as a whole. Uh, so I just wanted to be known out there that, hey, if if there's someone listening that wants to get involved and maybe cannot dedicate the time for this certain program, there are numerous opportunities for them to get involved, you know, to help support this. Awesome. Awesome. That's fantastic. I appreciate you guys coming on here. Um, talking about the program, talking about the mission, and we're looking forward to seeing another incredible year. Um, Caden, good luck this year in your season. Denny, you. best of luck to your teams, and Ali, obviously, best of luck to your teams as well. Uh, we'll be we'll be tuning in, guys, and I wish you all the best. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.